In this video, Timmy's going to show you how to insert a text box in Google Docs. If you want to insert a text box in Google Docs, you would think you could come up and click Insert in the menu across the top of the screen, and then just choose Text Box in this menu here. But there is actually not a text box option. And that's because Google Docs doesn't technically have a text box feature which is a bit of a shame, but don't worry, there is a pretty good workaround you can use to achieve basically the same thing, using a table. To do this, you'll first want to put your cursor wherever you want to insert the text box, just like you would before you insert anything in a Google Doc. So we might put it after this paragraph here, so we'll put the cursor there, and maybe press Enter to just give it a bit more space, and then You'll come up and click Insert in this menu up the top here, just like Timmy did before. But now you'll come down and hover over Table here. The Table feature is meant to basically insert a small spreadsheet into your Google Doc, but each one of those boxes in a table grid is essentially just a text box. So normally when you insert a table, you would hover over Table here, and then you would hover your mouse over this to choose what sort of table you want, how many boxes wide by tall. But to insert a text box the way we're going to do it, you can just hover your mouse over this one top left button here and click that. And that will simply insert a one box table, which is basically a text box. So now, as you can guess, you can go ahead and type whatever text you want to in it. And being text, you can highlight it and do whatever you want to it. So you could put it into a weird font, and make it bold and underlined. You could change the color if you want to. You could make it bigger. You can do whatever you want with your text and you could type more and everything. But now you have text in a text box. So. If you just want a very basic text box, you're really done. You now have one, but you can also customize it a bit if you want as well. By default, the box will take up the entire width of the Google Doc, but if you wanted to make it a bit narrower, you could click and drag on this line or the other line and drag it and drop it wherever you want and you can make it narrower. You can also do the same with the top and the bottom to make it taller or shorter, but it does do that automatically anyway to fit the text that's in it, so you probably don't need to bother with that. And if you ever want to move the text box, you can. It doesn't work overly well, so Timmy would recommend you pick where you want to put it and click your cursor there before you insert it, so you're inserting it into the correct place. But if you do end up deciding it needs to go in a different place, all you need to do is hover your mouse over the text box around the edges. And when you get to one of the corners, you should see this little icon with the dots on it. And then you can click that icon and use it to drag the text box somewhere else. Sometimes you can get into a bit of a mess doing this. It doesn't often always work that well but this has worked fairly well to drag it up a bit. So you can drag it to move it if you need to. And you can also bring up a settings panel with even more options. All you need to do is right click or two finger click on the text box like that. And because it's technically a table, the right click menu will have a lot of options like insert row and insert column and there's some more stuff about cells and columns down here. But you'll also have table properties here. And if you click table properties, it'll bring up this menu on the right hand side with a whole lot more options. So one option that can be cool is quick layouts. So right now we have manually positioned the text box where we want it. But if you just specifically wanted it to be in the middle of your document or the bottom right corner or something, you can click one of these options and it will force it to be there. And the text box will stay here no matter what. 
So even if you type text above it, the text will get pushed down around it. And this text box will always be in this corner or in the middle or wherever you put it. So that can be helpful if that's what you want to do with your text box. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that. So we might click the undo button here to undo that and put it back to where it originally was. And then if you ever click off the text box and you still want to keep changing these settings and you don't see anything here, you just need to click in the text box again and it'll pull it all back up for you. So that's quick layouts. If you want to use one of them, they're pretty good. Next we have table down here. So now there's some even more options. So right now it's set to inline, which means it's entirely taking up its own line. As we can see here, there's nothing next to it. But we could also click wrap text. And now the text will come up here. And there's some spaces in here that you would want to delete to make it look a bit better. But if you choose wrap text so that the text wraps right around the text box, that can make it fit in a bit better depending on your document. And if you choose wrap text, you also have a few more options down here. So you can adjust the margins. So if you want this text to be a bit further away from the text box, you might increase the right margin there. And it might be a bit close to the bottom, so we might increase the bottom margin. So you can adjust the positioning a bit like that. And while we're trying to get it right, we might delete the space in here somehow. There we go, that's a bit better. And we'll click back on the box. So we can do that. And then we also have the option to choose move with text or fix on page. So while it's set to move with text, if we add a whole lot more text down here, and Timmy's just typing nonsense right now. But as you can see, as Timmy's typing, the box is jumping down the page so that it stays with the text it's currently with. But if we click back on the text box, and change it to fix on page. Now, if we were to copy all of this and paste it down here, as you can see, the text is being pushed down. So it's merging around the text box and the text box is staying exactly there. So if you have it set to fix on page, the text box will stay exactly where it is on the page and the text will move around it. But if you have it set to move with text, if you add more text above it, then the box will go down so that it's always next to the same text in the correct position. So different options are good for different uses. But one more thing to me will add is if you use one of these quick layouts, it will actually force you to use fix on page because it has to fix it to one of these positions on the page. So those are the two options there. And you can really just ignore those. Column and row are both sections that are really only useful if you have a proper table with lots of different boxes. So you can probably skip those. Cell has some helpful things. You can choose vertical cell alignment. So top, middle, or bottom, but this is like, once again more useful if you have a whole table with lots of cells because here you could just add more space at the top or bottom and get it specifically right. But maybe we'll set that to the middle. But cell padding is actually quite useful. This is the gap between the line of the text box and the text inside it. So if we increase the cell padding, as you can see, there's now a giant gap between the text and the line, and that's probably too much, but maybe you want to have it like that or something, or you could go really low and have basically no gap. So it's up to you. We might leave it about there. And then the final section is color, and this can be quite helpful as well. The top option here is table border. 
So this is actually the border around your text box. So if you click the color button here, you could make it red or you could make it green or maybe a darker green so that it's easier to see. And next to the color option here, we also have where it says 1PT and you can click on this and make it three or something if you want. And that will make the border around your text box bigger and more obvious. So if you wanted to make it really fat or something, you could, or you could just make it a little bit fatter, or you could even make it skinnier, but you can't really get much skinnier than the default. And you can also change the cell background if you want to, which would be the background color of your text box. That's usually a bit too much overkill. Maybe we could make it yellow or something. Yeah, sometimes that looks pretty good, but most of the time you probably leave that to white or no background and just have your border and maybe your text in a color. But it's really all up to you. You can just fiddle around with all of this as much as you want and adjust it all to get your text box just right. And then when you're happy with it, you can go ahead and close this menu and go back to typing more text or doing whatever you're doing on your document. But you now have this text box in your document. And that's all there is to it. That's how you can insert a text box in Google Docs. So hopefully you found this workaround method helpful to insert a text box into your Google Doc. There are a few other videos out there that show you a different workaround method where you insert your text box as a drawing but then it ends up being more like a picture of a text box in the Google Doc instead of an actual text box. So Timmy thinks this method works a lot better because you basically have a real text box now. But that's all there is to it for this one. So Timmy will see you in another one soon.